maybe this is the first farm you've been to. Uh, we've been farming here for uh, 70, 80 years now. Yep. So it's like third generation I am. Um, and we've, I suppose as time has gone by, we've become a dairy farm. I think like a lot of farms, we have mixed and did lots of little things originally. Uh, but the chickens and the pigs went and, uh, and dairy farming became sort of the main thing um, back in the 80s I suppose, 70s, 80s and uh, gradually the herd's been building up ever since and then we sort of took a, uh, a brave step into cheese making in about 2009. So we, uh, we felt like there was, was brie was a good cheese to make, it was quite a challenging cheese to make, there's not many well, there isn't any unpasteurized brie made in the UK, and that's what we wanted to intend to do. And we felt we had as good a chance as anyone to, to make it a success because we got the complete control from the cows eating the grass to, uh, to the cheese, you know, to the milk being made into cheese. Yeah, this is the Waveney, Waveney Valley, yeah, um, and this divides Norfolk to Suffolk, and, um, and we, our cows graze part of the Waveney Valley. We went and picked these uh, one by one, these um, heifers from, from these French farms. They're all quite small over there and don't have much more than 20, 30 cows to farm. So they could only spare one, one, one heifer to sell. Um, so eventually we got a couple of lorry load of them um, and um, shipped them back here. Why, uh, why Montmeliard cows? Why have you chosen this beautiful, beautiful beast? beast. Um, she, she has a uh, great protein butterfat ratio, so um, the type of protein in her milk, what she produces, uh, is really suited for cheese making. Um, and if you look at some of the best cheeses, what made, it seems to be a Montpellier behind it, some of the lines on unpasteurized cheeses. Um, flavour seems to be a more, more interesting flavour, more unique to each individual farm. Um, yeah, longer lasting, sort of interesting flavours I think. Are you using your unpasteurised milk in the morning, the milk is raw all the way through? It is, yeah, no, no pasteurisation, the milk never goes above 36 degrees um, and, um, and uh, yeah, it, it gradually cools during the day. Um, just uh, it's all about getting the right temperature in the milk and the right room temperature, the right acidity, the right level of rennet the right setting time, the right cutting size, the right, all the rest of the things. And there's so many variables in, in cheese making, in, in particular our cheese, so um, a real challenge. Uh, cows, cows are milked, um, and the milk leaves the milk and parlor, drops into um, a holding tank. Uh, the milk isn't cooled, and from that point on there is no pump involved, no machinery involved, everything is done, is done by hand. Milk, we then transfer the milk from the milking parlour side of the farm over to the cheese building via gravity through a pipe. Um, and once it goes in there, it's then uh, rennetted. Uh, rennet makes the milk go to curd, and, and we cut the curd uh, with a long sword and uh, into squares. From there, we then wait for a certain amount of whey to drain from the curd, and then we start ladling um, with a, all done in the same style as a brie de mot. Uh, so we'd be ladling it with a, a, what the French call the pellebri, which is a big ladle with holes in it, and uh, ladling that into moulds. And um, uh, after a, a few hours of, um, of hot, sweaty work, yep. um, Don't know about it. it's all in, all in moulds, all done by hand. And uh, after that, it's several turns, then maturing the cheese on, growing the right moulds and yeasts on it, uh, wrapping it, boxing it, and making about. 60, 70 cheeses um, a make. Uh, depending last on the three year. kilogram traditional grease. Yep, yep. So we're still like a really small scale operation. And what are you looking for in that final cheese? What would be your ideal bar and bar? Um, I'd like to see a little bit of the, um, the, 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 the curdy, chalky bit in the middle still. Mm -hmm. I think it just leaves that much more interesting, uh, interesting selection of flavours and textures in the cheese. So you have the, you have the, the, the thin rind, you have then the broken down bit which tends to go quite gooey and then you've got the little bit of part in the centre of the of the brie um, which just gives it a more sort of um, sharp sharp lemony sort of um, tang to it 
Um, I think that's like the French like to eat it like that, but us British, we, we by the t I think the story goes by the time the cheese left France and got to the UK, that it, it, it all matured, and, and hence why we got brought up on, 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 on runny brie. <laughs> I'd love it, love it to be, I don't know if it ever will, but it would be like, you know, looked at as one of the best brie's made in the UK. We had a fantastic time down in uh, Bungay in Suffolk at Fen Farm Dairy, making Baron Bygot brie with Johnny and the team. And here at the Courtyard Dairy, we're really proud to champion small farmhouse producers.